Dear Harstem, my complaint is about carriers and the mothership. Those units are broken. My opponent opened the game with a cannon rush. Maybe I overreacted, pulling all of my SCVs, but I managed to stop him. After that, I tried to push his natural expansion, but he had cannons in defense. And by the time my tank arrived, he had already four void rays, which I couldn't stop with my army because of shield batteries and cannons. Then he attacked with his void rays and took one of mine CC, but it wasn't a problem. I had more bases than him and I had the map control. So I tried to harass him with Vikings and Marines. I ended up doing a good job, I guess. But when the carriers were too much, I had to retreat. In this game, I thought I was ahead from the start to my opponent's last push. I had better economy, better map control, and overall I think I played better than him. But anyway, in his last push, his carriers, in combination with the mothership, were unstoppable by my forces. Maybe I lacked in upgrades, or maybe I just wasn't able to micro properly. Please tell me, are Skytos Imba? Or do I suck? Name, Vida Lorso. Race, Terran. League Platinum at 2.9k MMR. And the server is Europe. This very Italian sounding name, Vita Lorso. Asked the most important question, and that is, are Skytos Imba? Or do I suck? And we're about to find out and investigate. All right, and that leads us to the actual game. Pencroft as our Protoss player here on Tropical Sacrifice. Well, in the bottom left, we have the man, the myth, the legend, Vita Lorso. Ooh, look at that. Looks like some uh, Halo figure over here, but I feel like this might also be like some StarCraft dude. Halo and StarCraft share a lot of similarities. Both of them, I believe, are in space. It's pretty big. Um, Forge, right. It was a cannon rush. He mentioned this in his uh, imbalance complaint form. What did he say exactly again? Maybe I overreacted pulling all of my SCVs, but I managed to stop him. Now, when it comes to stopping cannon rushes, I like to say rather an overreaction than an underreaction. It's a little bit as being very, uh, you know, being very scared of someone's dodgy behavior when you're in like a train or something like that, you know? If there's a guy screaming, I'm gonna stab you, I'm gonna stab you, then I'd rather have you leave the train at the next station than try and find out if he actually means it or not. So oftentimes, if your life is on the line, overreacting is better than underreacting. I almost ate my own tongue there. That would be quite the overreaction to having a bit of a dry throat. But once again, that would have been good. I should have eaten my tongue. <clears throat> Mistakes happen though. Um, so yeah, this actually went pretty well. He takes out the the probe. I mean, he pulls his workers off the line, but it's not that big of a deal. It, it really isn't. You lose like maybe 150 minerals or so, but you completely deny this cannon rush. And don't forget, the investment in a cannon rush is way more than just 150 minerals. Not only, I just, I just want to make this clear. Not only is it just the money you actually invest in the cannon rush, but it's also kind of the lost opportunity of... Uh, putting any type of pressure early on as a Protoss player. Your gateway is delayed and thus your tech is delayed. Your defensive forces are later. Any type of tech, uh, like a Dark Shrine or an Oracle, will be way later as well. So it is more than just the actual minerals, but even mineral-wise, the Forge and the Aggressive Cannon are already 250 minerals. So you can pull, what, 15 SEVs for, you know, 10, 10, 10, 12 seconds, and you'll probably be okay. And a little bit longer, especially if there's like a second pylon and this type of stuff shows up. This is actually a perfect response right now. You have the Marine setting two SEVs to the left cannon, three SEVs to the right cannon. Ooh, Protoss does cancel it. That's actually, that's a high level move for a Platinum game. Not gonna lie. Actually canceling the cannons and everything. Look at that. Absolute tryhards. Now, from this point on, there's two things that I would like to see. One is an orbital command. And two would be a Reaper here. Now, the reason why I say a Reaper is because very, very often Protoss players, they build a, a pylon on the low ground to get a couple of cannons so they can safely expand. Without cannons, they can't really expand. Um, they might die against like a couple of Marines or uh, the Terran can build a bunker here and basically deny their natural base forever and ever. However, a Reaper also forces a cannon in the main mineral line and a single cannon also isn't quite enough because a single cannon imagine you put it over here in the middle it would not cover this spot or this spot which means that a reaper could hold position here and deny mining on the outside mineral patches now i don't really imagine pencroft the platinum player that he is would pull away these five workers and let them mine from somewhere else and properly manage that so he probably would end up losing a couple of workers for free the reaper also provides free scouting which once again is very tricky to get the moment there are two cannons on the high ground waiting to kill you 
Um, so potential for damage, free scouting, uh, all of that good jazz, basically. Orbital Command, yeah, it's a little bit late. I think it was about a minute late over here, maybe like 50 seconds. And that's actually kind of a big deal for the economy of Vida Lore. So the reason for that is because with an Orbital Command, you can throw down a mule. A mule gets between 200 and 225 minerals in its lifetime. The lifetime of a mule is 64 seconds. And every 64 seconds, I think it's 63 and a half seconds, you can throw down a new mule. So basically what I'm saying is every 60 seconds that you're delaying your orbital command costs you about 200 to 225 minerals. Um, so it's extremely important that you get it as quickly as possible. If you delay it by two minutes for no reason whatsoever, that's already an entire command center that you're missing. So far, he's missed it, I think, for like about a minute. And right now in the natural, he's also not building one. So that is a little bit painful and... This is really also the only reason why usually Terran is even in income while being behind in workers. Protoss, of course, has the Chrono Boost ability, which allows them to get more workers than the Terran, but that is fine because an, uh, a mule counts for, what is it, like three and a half to four SCVs, depending on a far or a close by mineral patch where the mule is mining. So six Marines are going to march across the map. You already know that there's two cannons here, so these two marines are going to be completely useless and will be incapable of dealing any damage whatsoever. You already know this. There's no way you don't know this. You can poke up here. You just got the basically the information confirmed that he didn't cancel these two cannons. I don't think you had to sacrifice a marine for that. But then again, your opponent also, I think, just gifted you two probes total here. I think he sent one in before as well. Very, very cool. Tank is coming out right now. Once again, this is just not enough to break onto a high ground. I'd much rather have you wait for a medevac with a reactor here. Okay, very odd build order. I'm not going to focus too much on that. I'm really not that interested in, in improving your build order. You can do that by yourself by just looking at any replay. But getting a reactor at this time on your starboard, especially while you already have a factory with a tech lab, is completely useless. You simply do not have the gas income for it. Still not, m still don't have an orbital command here. So at this point, I think you're down like four to six hundred minerals or so, um, where you should have been. You're still ahead. Don't get me wrong. You're still out mining your opponent in a big way because your opponent is mining a crap ton of gas. Mining gas cuts big into your uh, mineral eco, and. Minerals are the only thing that uh, increases your actual economy. Everything that increases your eco can be paid for, indeed, by minerals. Gas, command centers, depots, SCVs, all that good jazz. Two more gases on the way for you. Relatively okay call. Medevac is here right now. Could provide you high ground vision, but rather than doing that, you're just kind of idling here for at least a little bit longer. Okay, here we go. Somewhat of a good move. You are in range of a cannon, so it's, it's not absolutely brilliant. One tank gets taken out. Manifex almost dead as well. This has not been the greatest micro. Actually, this is probably the worst you could have micro this situation. I'm not quite sure how it happened, but you managed to lose two tanks, a medevac. And all you did was deal a little bit of damage on one void ray. If okay. I'm very big on people kind of, you know, playing playing to the, their own power so if your strength is macro then i'd focus a lot on that if your weakness is micro and attacking into cannon positions i would not do that again so i would suggest at this point you pick up these eight marines drop them in towards the main base continue macroing at home then the moment stim finishes or before stim finishes you scout with them to see what's going and maybe you kill a couple of workers that's really all you're going to be doing. I, I would not recommend going for the same trick again. It didn't work before. It's probably not going to end up working now. So it was just my my humble suggestion. And this guy is balls of steel as well. Sends four void rays across the map while he's being practically two and a half base all in. I also would like to stress, by the way, that there's absolutely no need for our Terran player to actually be on the other side of the map right now. He's up an entire base. Um, probably has better infrastructure has more workers as well technically you could just be preparing for a two base all-in that has to be coming or you can just deny your opponent's third base forever you can just keep a unit on each third base and the moment it gets taken you start moving across the map so i wouldn't have minded having a couple of extra units at home then again 
I don't think anyone could have really predicted this move, so I'm not gonna blame you for it. You lose a command center. This still wasn't an orbital, by the way, so that's like, what? Like, legit, like, a thousand minerals that you've missed with uh, lacking mules. This hasn't turned into an orbital yet either. I'm not quite sure how long this is, has been done, but it's also been done for at least uh, 45 seconds or so. So it's not been great. At least you're gonna get these void rays, I guess. For whatever reason, Pencroft decides that uh, damaging the starport to 517 HP is more important than flying away and perhaps keeping these very expensive units alive. As a response, you build five turrets in mediocre positions. Uh, the building placement and the order in which you build the buildings hasn't been brilliant so far. Get a second reactor on the starport. You continue Viking production despite going for a big bio army. You still only have a single medevac. Now, these are all the types of decisions that I'm usually not a huge fan of. Okay, if you're planning on going for a bunch of bio, which you obviously were because you had two racks, now you get a second starport. I would say get a couple of medevacs so they actually have some real sustain to them. There's absolutely nothing right now that could kill these 22 marines. I almost believe at this point you could just actually walk up the ramp and kill your opponent. But what you could also do is fly forward with two vikings. And try to take out the carrier. I can't believe you actually got that carrier. I was going to make fun of you for this move, but it worked out. So then I can't really make fun of it. That was a very good trade. That actually was a very good trade. Oh, Viking still alive as well. I love that you're flying away from one interceptor. It's like, oh, the two carriers earlier was fine with the two Vikings, but now there's a single interceptor left. You decided to move the Viking back and actually let it die. That was a mistake. You also have been supply blocked at 78, 78 for the past, I think, minute and a half. Have you even produced anything? I love the focus here on the drop. Like, I understand that you really want to micro this well, and you probably do have the opportunity to, to kill your opponent, but it's not the most important thing. Like, you've been supply blocked now for almost an entire minute, and StarCraft 2 is a lot about prioritizing often. And what you're doing at this moment is rearranging your shoelace collection in alphabetical order while your house is on fire. I'm sure there are some sneaker freaks out there that would kind of understand it, but I don't think I have enough empathy to truly get behind that decision. Okay, more Vikings across the map. The only reason why you're capable of producing, by the way, is because you're losing units, not because you've been building depots. At any point during this, you could have continued producing workers or build depots. Hello? We're landing? And we're going up in the sky. Maybe land another time. Just show it off one more time. Real good. No? Okay. Right. This also is an interesting decision. You brought the Marauder upstairs, but all the Marines that can actually shoot up are downstairs. Now you're fighting into a super battery. Ah! You can see the super battery. What's healing him? What's happening here? This had to be the most confusing uh, 14 seconds of his life. It's like, man, the mothership. I'm attacking it with four Vikings. No wonder he thinks the mothership is really broken. I already was confused how he could complain about the mothership being too good, but it all goes back to the super battery being invisible. And Vita Lorzo not really, once again, he's like, man, this guy has insane shield regeneration. I can't remember it being that good. No, oh, once again, we get a, what do you call this? The assault mode, I think it's called, of the Viking. Once again, just microing his heart out while floating 1300 minerals. Now, don't get me wrong, Protoss player also is floating 3k minerals and 1800 gas, which is also not brilliant. Um, but what you're doing is definitely not brilliant. You're way, you should be way out mining him. You're, well, you're still doubling his income, which honestly is fine. You haven't built any upgrades out of these eBay's. You haven't built any upgrades or any armories even yet for the Vikings. Now you're gonna lose out your army. The one thing that is true about the carrier and that a lot of people dislike as well, is that it's often harder to micro against than it is to micro with. So the carrier can A-move, and your units, if they A-move, will target down the interceptors, which is a win for the carrier often, because if you kill the interceptors, the carriers go back home, recharge on interceptors, and then they go again. Now, 
if you actually make an army of mass marine and you're fighting against pure carrier, that usually isn't much of an issue because marines actually are better than carriers, especially with good upgrades. And if they're being healed, maybe you get some ghosts with it as well and it's all good. But if you're building Vikings as the main counter, there's one thing that I expect you to do, and that is to properly right click on the carriers so that they're all targeting the carrier and not the interceptor. Because every time you kill a carrier, the interceptors automatically die with it as well. If you have a massive marine army, very often you can just kill the interceptors because your damage output is so ridiculously good. And once again, you're going in with the Vikings. Um, by continuously attacking up this ramp, by the way, this is kind of funny. So you wanted to stay in control this game and you wanted to uh, put on a lot of pressure. But sometimes the best way to put on pressure is just by standing outside of your opponent's base and not allowing him to ever take a third. By pushing, by actively pushing into his main base, into the battery, you gave your opponent a chance to hold with enough units and gave your opponent opponent a chance to uh, basically get a nexus out and start three cannons as well which never would have been possible if you just idled your entire army in this exact location so this once again it it kind of shows that putting on constant pressure often isn't the greatest thing and you also mentioned map control a couple of times in your imbalance complaint form as a, a thing that is very useful but map control it isn't an actual resource. It's not like being up in supply. It only has real value if you can use it well. Like if you have complete map control, but then with that map control, you just boost Medivax into your opponent's cannons. Like the map control did nothing for you. And despite you having map control and having good map vision even because you're spreading out Marines, I don't feel like you've actually been using it for good. You've just been... You've just had it, and that's it. Like, there's there's no real point. Don't forget, it's not about the size of the wave, but it's about the motion of the ocean. Okay, Vikings uh, attacking the carriers. And up, and down, and up. And now attacking the interceptors, and then the carrier. This reminds me a little bit uh, of my Uncle Ronnie. My Uncle Ronnie has a, a convertible car. And if you go for a drive with Uncle Ronnie in his convertible car, the rooftop is coming off. No matter the weather, it can be hailing, there can be rain. Uncle Ronnie, I'm getting wet. Shut it, Kevin. I have a convertible. I feel like you have the same issue here with your Vikings. You just want to show off that they have two different modes. You know, they can fly, they can land, they can fly, they can land. If your opponent, however, has three or four carriers, it's probably the best thing just to keep them in the air. Just like if it's raining, Uncle Ronnie, we keep the roof up so our heads are covered. That's what the roof was invented for. They figured this out in caveman times. No one cares about your comfortable car. Um, so now with all of this behind us, you managed to give your opponent a third base. Lost all of your Vikings. Realized that you need upgrades as well after seeing your opponent going for upgrades. Or at least, well, I'm not quite sure if people in Platinum click your opponent's units. If you click your opponents usually, and you don't have a weird replay overlay like I have, you usually see the, you know, you can see the upgrade numbers on your opponents' units. Oh, there we go again. Yes! Of course, put them on the floor again. There we go. I can't wait to tell my uncle that he, that I know a new friend. Yes, he's an Italian, but he's a great guy. I bet you and him will get along great, Ronnie. Unbelievable. Four more Vikings on the way. These are in the air. Do these have stim? Yeah, no combat. No upgrade still, despite there being two eBays. It's just a very interesting game altogether. Oh, Vikings accidentally got got found on the ground again. But honestly, how could Vita Lorso have known that there would be more carriers? After so far in the entire game, there have already been three zealots and only, what is it, 12 other air units. This must have come as a massive surprise for Vita Lorso. And the result losing six Vikings, or was it eight Vikings for free, and now losing this fight because he lost eight Vikings for free. Another thing I would like to draw the attention to is uh, the money that Vita Lorso has. And I often say this about Zerg, if you have trouble spending your money, there's absolutely no shame in building a macro hatch whatsoever it's actually a good thing if you have too much money to spend your money on a macro edge it's the same with terran if you have too much money spend it on more production so you can more easily produce 
So the beauty of extra production is that you can just spend so fast extra and extra and it saved me from many situations in my life as well. Three hours later. And that kids is how a macro hatch helped me survive a Jaguar attack in Belgium. Oh, where was I? Right, extra starports. I actually kind of like it that we already have these three extra starports here. It feels somewhat good. Um, you can continuously be building Vikings if you want to, which apparently is definitely what our good friend Vita Lorso wants to, because he's also getting the ship weapons as well as the vehicle plating upgrades. Now, like I mentioned before, I'm not necessarily a huge fan of uh, Vikings as a counter to carriers. Ooh, look at that! Extra star ports. Beautiful stuff, beautiful stuff. It's actually lacking a little bit in gas. He's really pushing it now with the extra star ports. Okay, I'm a big fan of it, but getting three extra. Also, queuing one up is a big move. It's not a big move, it's a mistake. It's anything but a big move. Ship weapons level two. Um, no real vision on your opponent, but doesn't matter. In case you could have like a marine over here, marine over here, marine over here. Of course, that would be the only possible if you actually had marines. What is this scan? Does he not realize there's also potential for a base here? I say it's not like he's under some heavy pressure. Like he could just send an SCV over. Once again, a scan is extremely expensive. A scan is practically the equivalent of a mule. Like, it's just as much energy. It's 200 minerals you just wasted. It's really not cheap. Like, it's legitimately expensive. No memes. Ship weapons level 2. More Vikings still go coming in. I... The problem with going for a, a, a full Viking battlecruiser composition is that you might just... Uh, you, you need a lot more gas. Like, you need to saturate every single gas you have. Or you're just going to be floating minerals. Okay, here we go. There's a fight. Look at that. Beautiful. Shoots the interceptors once. Loses five Vikings. Shoots the interceptors another time. No target fire. No target fire. Okay, now we get target fire on the mothership. Mothership dies. As every single Viking has gone down. Very nice. Now, this was beautiful. The funny thing here is... Is that this actually showcased... The, the power of carrier in a lower level game. Both of these players literally just A moved. And in this case, the carriers win. Because against the carrier, like I mentioned before, you need to actually right click on the carrier to kill them rather than go for the interceptors. So you could say that the only thing or the only thing that Vida Lorso had to do more here was to right click or shift click on individual units. Seven clicks is what it would have been. Is this seven? No, this is six. Six clicks. Just a right click on six different units. That was all the micro that I've asked in this entire game for Vita Lorso. Literally all of it. That's the only thing I would have wanted. And he didn't do that. And that's not good. If that is literally the only micro. At this point, the game is extremely over. There is... Well, you have, I guess, the production over here. But there's still triple carriers coming out as well. I'm not too interested in watching every single building burn down. I'm just going to speed this up a little bit. More turrets as well. I love that his initial instinct was to defend this base, which had three SEVs mining. And throw entire turret rings around it. Turret rings also are not actually that useful. If you want turrets to be more useful, you have to cluster them because then more can attack at the same time. The reason why we often build turret rings is against things like prisms. So if you're afraid of a prism going into your main base, you can build a turret here, a turret here, a turret here, and a turret here, and then the prism can't get in. But if you're fighting against an air army that does air attacks, you want all the anti-air to be as clustered as possible. Otherwise, in this case, the carriers can just attack turrets here on the right side and then slowly move over to different sides while only a small portion of the turret turrets at each time are shooting. Yeah, this game is actually completely over. It's a late game battle cruiser transition, which funnily enough also could have worked this game. Look, against carriers, if it's just a pure carrier army, there's about 50 things that Terran can do. Mass Viking works, mass battle cruiser works, Mass Marine works, Mine Marine works, Marine Ghost works, Marine Mine Ghost works. Anything basically but rallying 
Vikings in, what were they called again? Assault mode into your opponent would have worked. Especially given the eco advantage that Vita Lorso has had this game. And I'm actually, I'm also a bit surprised that he complained about the carriers and the mothership equally. What in the world is he doing here? So he's flying the, the orbital away. This is one of the things that I never quite understand. And it, it tends to be Terrence the most. But if you just played a game where you were up legit four or five bases and you couldn't win the game being up four bases and up 35 or 40 supply, how do you imagine you're gonna win the game by saving this command center while being down 130 supply? It just never made any sense to me whatsoever. And you could say he's just angry and he wants to waste his opponent's time, but he's also wasting his own time. So by doing that, you're basically saying that your time is less valuable than your opponent's time. Because only then would it be a good trade. You're basically calling yourself a loser if you pull a move like this. And you could say, well, he just fly flows his buildings away and then there's nothing. But right now he has 100 APM. This is more than his average. How is it possible that Vita Lorso is currently doing more than he did in average, on average, in the entire game? I don't understand that. This is the point where you should be doing nothing anymore because you're dead. It makes no sense. It's over, my friend. You have lost. It's time to leave. Get into the next game. You know, get that respawn button going. I just don't understand this type of thinking. Impressive. No, what's impressive was your ability to stay in after the game finished five minutes ago. That's the most impressive thing. All right. Let me take a quick look at that balance complaint again. The carrier and the mothership. Now, I understand why he was upset about the mothership. The mothership has insane shield regeneration, according to Vita Lorso, because the, the super battery was invisible. I wonder if you watched the replay, saw it happen, and I was like, ah, that's how it. Or if he never actually watched the replay because he was too impressed by his opponent's playstyle. Um, what else? Unstoppable by my forces. Maybe I lacked in upgrades, or maybe I just wasn't able to micro properly. So I mentioned the micro a little bit, is that you have to shift click, which I'm not even quite sure if I would really consider that massive micro, like you're not pulling back big units, you're not even kiting. It's just, this is like the most basic thing, it's just target figuring stuff down. It's not like it's banelings on creep or zerglings on creep. Like these things are, they're kind of static, you know? It's like right clicking static buildings. It's like a, it shouldn't be too hard. And you kind of did lack that. But the thing that I'm the most upset about is the constant landing of the Vikings without any purpose. Every single time after you kill the carrier, you felt the need to land four or six or eight Vikings. Or even if you hadn't killed the carrier, you would just idle outside of your opponent's base with eight landed Vikings. And I honestly believe that even without target fire micro, if just all of your Vikings during the entirety of the game stayed in the air, you probably would have won this. So no, carriers and motherships aren't actually in balance. It is you, my friend, who sucks. And that's the cold truth. All right. Thanks everyone for watching. Uncle Ronnie, I'm looking forward to the next car riding your convertible. And uh, if you did like this video, don't forget to like button, subscribe to the channel. And I'll see all of you next time for a new video. Thank you and bye-bye.